So the reason why Thailand and Bangkok and Chiang Mai is one of the leading digital nomad hubs, I think Thailand is unique as a country that people can really come here and feel at home and, and be part, integrated part of the community. And I didn't know this, someone like one digital nomad came to me, he's like, ah, did you know like there's this thing called nomad list and Chiang Mai is listed as number one according to them? I was like, really? I had no idea. That's when I started becoming aware of what a digital nomad is. And like here in Chiang Mai, they're just everywhere. I mean, I could throw a stone and probably hit a digital nomad. <laughs> so some of the misconceptions of the digital nomad movement is that an over-optimistic view of, hey, let's come to Southeast Asia, live cheap, live the life like small kings in a third world country. Are you sick of waking up feeling uninspired and bored with life? Is your life full of doing stuff you don't like? Surrounded by idiots earning just enough to get by? Well, screw that. We show you exactly how to escape the dead-end rat race and experience the Thai dream. You're not gonna automatically become rich just because you live in a cheaper country. So it really depends on what you're working on, how would you monetize, how will you understand the market, how will you solve the problem. So that, you know, entrepreneurs, digital nomads alike have to take care on their own. So they're here on a tourist visa, and they're always doing all these tourist visa runs, go to the border, come back. Some of them, they go to, let's say, Thai language school, and they'll become a student for Thai language, but then they never go to classes. But the point is, is that they're not getting the visas that they need for the intended purposes that they're here for. The reason there is a visa in the first place is there was a lot of abuses in the past. You know, a lot of people just came here and lived here and didn't pay their taxes, and. You know, that was a challenge and then we had a lot of you know, expats that were up to some naughty stuff and... So for example, we create a digital nomad visa, great, all the digital nomads would sign up. But what's to prevent someone like that is say a sexpat? A sexpat is a guy who's here just to, you know, maybe he's an older gentleman, he wants to hit on young Thai girls. Meet Thai girls and party like crazy, all while making money? Then this is for you. Start living your dreams today. Well, these are the people we don't want. These are the sorts of things that you know, we have to think about and actually start coming up with solutions for. If local entrepreneurs, local ties feel that there's a need to welcome more digital nomads and that digital nomad create a great positive influence and effect, and then I think a lot of these problems will be solved. So we need to work together on this. I think one of the biggest issues with the digital nomad community is trying to not associate digital nomads with the sex tourism community. There's a lot of women that are forced into it. There's a lot of issues around the mafia. Loads of women that are digital nomads that are part of this community. And we have to be mindful that, that it's an all-male community or male-dominated makes it uninclusive and repulsive for some people. Let's say, let's look at a world where Star Trek existed, yeah? the Federation of Planets and whatnot. They didn't have like borders, they didn't have like nationalities, they were Earth. If the world is going to move in that sort of direction, the digital nomad lifestyle is one pathway that we can get there. It's pretty awesome. With that said, uh, the digital nomads right now, they need to set a good example because here it's all about, look, the, the infrastructure is cheap, the lifestyle, the standard of living is cheap, so people should take advantage of it. They can use this as sort of like their little crucible or their incubator or their launch pad to sort of just boost themselves out into orbit to make themselves really great. Digital nomads, they can be working on distributed teams on unicorn startups across the world. They can be some of the most amazing people to talk to. If we can elevate that culture within the digital nomad community and saying, hey, we're going to be a bunch of people that we're cultural, educational ambassadors as much as we have great fun for ourselves, we're really going to get plugged into the community. Once that happens, I think the movement will really erase some of the image that has been built over the years.